So hi guys, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sat here with Michelle Dadatanji, who is a psychotherapist and a relationship marriage expert. You're yes. like <laughs> guru on all things <laughs> from marriage to separation and yeah, just keeping relationships together. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of life coaching as well. Yes. We've just been talking about all the things that you cover yeah. with your work and it really is a lot of... I don't know, well-being and yeah, mental health, emotional well-being, just kind of relationship, marriage, coaching, therapy, yeah. um, just being able to live your best best life, really. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of part one of a two-part series um, where we're going to be talking about, you know, from marriage and marital problems right the way through to divorce and out the other side. Um, but obviously, so today's video, we're really talking about the time when things are not easy Struggle, in a relationship. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think there is a marriage or relationship that doesn't hit that point, especially Definitely. when you throw kids into the mix. Yeah. Um, but there's so many other things that can also affect a marriage and yeah. relationship, like... Um, friends around you, yeah. death of parents. Finances death. is yeah. a huge one. Yeah. yeah. Mental health, physical well-being, illnesses, all of that kind of stuff. Anything life wants to throw at you that will impact your relationship or your mm. marriage. So what do we do then? <laughs> how do we how do we cope when you know you've got this wonderful honeymoon period in a relationship where you first meet and you know your tummy flips every time you're gonna meet somebody, you get dressed up, you look yeah. your best sex is wonderful you know everything is great and then two these, years down the line yeah exactly yeah. and these things start to affect the relationship yeah. you know should we be in relationships forever and what do we do when it all goes wrong right, michelle well i think that every relationship is unique obviously you know mm -hmm. every relationship has two individual people bringing together all of their experiences all of their yeah. life experiences all their emotional kind of baggage if you want mm -hmm. to call it that yeah and you're bringing it together into this kind of one um united partnership yeah. and it's not always smooth sailing and i think relationships and marriages take a lot of effort a lot of energy and it needs to be kind of consistent and continual it doesn't yeah. have to be like hard work all the time i know a lot of people are like but this is hard work you know this is not what i signed up for it was yeah. amazing the first two years we were together or the first five years to we, we were together and then things start to hit kind of a speed bump and you know the yeah. arguments start to build up the fighting becomes a bit more sinister the you know we start to resent our partners yeah. So I think kind of the bottom line is relationships take work, they take energy, they take effort, but from both people. Yeah. And I think that's really important. And I think um, a lot of the time my clients come to me when they're at a point of, I'm not sure if I can stay in this relationship any longer, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, I, and I'm so grateful that they've actually made it to me because I can yeah. then help them and support them to understand why they feel the way they do. Yeah. Which I think is kind of the foundation of the work that I do with my clients. Yeah. Because no one's ever given us the chance to, um, or the space, to think about mm -hmm. why do I feel the way I do? You know, why do I react the way I do? Why do I respond the way I do to my partner, to my kids, to my parents? Yeah. Where has all this come from? Because I think, you know, having, I've, I've had quite a few people who have written stuff in yeah. to me since I said that we were going to do this chat um and friendships and obviously my own marriage which didn't didn't make it mm. um and i think one of the big questions is can a relationship be saved when you get to the point in a relationship where every single thing that that person is doing is driving you mad mm. when the yeah. way that they chew their food yeah. the way they scrape their plate in the bin if yeah. they even do that <laughs> yeah um the tiny things they do, the way they walk, the way they put their shoes on, the way they speak to the kids, when they are just driving you mad on a daily basis, and actually the things that are winding you up aren't actually the things that are really winding you up. Definitely, yeah. Have you hit a point there where you need to give up on the relationship and go your separate ways, when you just can't find the goodness in each other? No, I don't believe that at all. I, I strongly believe that with, with work and energy and investment in yourself and your marriage, you are most definitely able to kind of bring back and heal 
any kind of marital problems that arise. You know, a lot of people talk about affairs and cheating and, you know, can you ever come back from that? And I, I believe yes, you know, and I've mm. supported people through it. There's loads of other coaches and psychotherapists out there who have supported other people with similar thing, healing after, you know, kind of different things that have rocked yeah. your marriage. It's completely possible, but you have to put in the effort. Yeah. You know, that, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. And I think you're absolutely right. It's not the chewing, it's not the, you know, the little things mm. that are that are upsetting you. It's not those things that you're getting resentful about. I mean, it is those things on the surface, but mm -hmm. actually it's all the things underneath that that have built up and up and up over time yeah. that you haven't looked at, that you might not even be consciously aware of, yeah. that you're then reacting to when mm -hmm. they do something small that annoys you or pisses you off. Yeah. You know, so, and then we explode. You know, yeah. we shout, we swear, we scream, and there's no respect and there's no love in that yeah. at all, isn't there? And, th and that's when it becomes difficult to then communicate. Yeah. And so that's what I work with my clients a lot on is communication in your relationship. I know everyone says communication is key, yeah. everyone's banging on about it all the time, mm -hmm. but really, um, firstly, understanding how you feel and why you feel the way you do. Yeah. And this has a lot to do with our past, our yeah. upbringing, the way that um, these patterns of behavior have been ingrained within us, yeah. you know, through our childhood, through our parenting, um, how we've been parented or how we're parenting our children. Mm -hmm. I think all of these things, because as humans, we're so complicated. Yeah. So, so complicated. And I came across a beautiful quote, which I really love, and it's, um, loving well is an art, but getting there is a science. Yeah. And that's such a, that's such a perfect way of describing exactly what I do mm. in my business, which is as humans, we're complicated. We have all these emotions yeah. and feelings um, underneath our behavior. And it's about understanding where do those come from? Yeah. And how can I change them? How can I be the person that I want to be as opposed to the person that I'm actually being? Mm. If that makes sense. It does. And I think that kind of leads on to another question mm. that I've had, um, which is, my partner doesn't want to come for counselling mm -hmm. with me. So yeah. you're in a marriage, you know there's a problem, you know your marriage is on the rocks, but your partner doesn't think it's the marriage that's the problem. They don't believe it's them. Yeah. Of course it's not them. Of course <laughs> not, never. <laughs> so, what, do you do, what do you do in that situation? Because I think that's very common, it where is, yeah. one person in the relationship is really noticing yeah. the problems and the issues, yeah. and the other person is not noticing no, whether it's blind because, to it yeah, yeah yeah and i get that all of the time um i i mostly see women in my private practice and a lot of the women are saying you know how come i'm coming to you and how come i'm getting support and i'm putting the effort and the energy and the money into working on myself when he's not doing anything about it yeah. you know he doesn't believe there's there's a problem he thinks i'm nitpicking and, and yes yeah. uh, i'm making up problems in our mm -hmm. relationship and I, you know, what I say is actually the bottom line is you're not happy. You're not happy, you're very aware that this relationship or this marriage is no longer serving you. Yeah. And you're at a place where you want to get help and you want to get support. Mm -hmm. So really it's your responsibility to go and get that help and support. And what I say to the women is actually the work that we do on you in, in counseling, whether it's the man or the woman that I'm seeing, yeah. I, see, I see the individual, um, what, you know, the work that we do on you, the work that you do on yourself in these yeah. sessions will have a positive impact in your relationship and in your marriage because you will get to know yourself better. And in knowing yourself better, you'll be able to understand your needs. You'll be able to have the space created to mm -hmm. feel heard, to feel listened to, to have your feelings validated, which a lot of the people who come to me are saying, my partner doesn't validate my feelings. Yeah. You know, he or they, they don't understand why I feel this way. They don't, they don't get, yeah. you know, what you said earlier, you've got everything, yeah. what more do you want kind of thing. The relationship is going well in their mind, but for you, it's not, it's not serving you. It's not fulfilling. Yeah. But what I talk to them about is actually in, in the fast paced societies that we've grown up in, we've never had the chance or the space to explore ourselves, mm. you know, so it comes back to empowering myself. Yeah. What are my needs? What are my wants? What are my desires? Whether it's um, intimacy, sex, eroticism, yeah. whether it's, you know, kind of emotional connection, yeah. whether it's doing the house chores, you know, how do we want to do that together? Mm. Um, how do we want to raise our kids together? That kind of thing. And, and because we're always evolving as humans, yeah. we're always changing. So ultimately, so, you go for counselling, mm -hmm. even if you have to take a step yourself, you go for counselling on your own. Yeah. 
And obviously that's going to change your reactions as well to your partner Definitely. because your understanding of their behaviour and your behaviour and what the problems are in the relationship are obviously going to change your reaction. Yeah. So perhaps you might be able to understand their behaviour more. Exactly. Yeah. Which in turn, you know, whether you think it's your fault or their yeah. fault yeah. Um, is going to help. But I think another thing, you know, you just touched upon um, another subject there, which is, you know, there, what are my needs in a relationship? Mm -hmm. So there are so many needs. And I think two people come together and obviously to start off with, it's like animalistic, isn't Amazing. it? Amazing. You're, yeah, you're so it's attractive. Wonderful. Exactly. Magnetism. Yeah. But actually, you know, there are long term needs in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And they're ever-changing needs as well. Then I have kids, mm -hmm. and actually my needs are completely different because my priority becomes my children. Definitely. So what do we do? You know, you've got two people, and yeah. one of them saying, my needs are X. sex. Yeah. I yeah. need lots of sex. Yeah. And then you've got this woman who's had a baby yeah. and breastfed, yeah. you know, she's drained, yeah. physically given everything to these kids, and yeah. she's not feeling so sexy anymore because her body's gone from this to this. And she's, you know, Not whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, this no is just drive. an example. Yeah. Yeah. That, wait a minute, what was there when we first met mm -hmm. has completely changed. Yeah. How do you deal with that? How do yeah. you deal with meeting each other's needs mentally, emotionally, sexually, yeah. when actually... It's constantly changing. <laughs> yeah, you're totally. knackered yeah. and you don't yeah. feel the same. Yeah. You know, can you make that work? Yeah, I, and I believe you can, you know, and I think you're, you're exactly right what you said in terms of there's two completely different people, you know, you might yeah. have lots in common, that's why you've been attracted together um, to meet, meet each other, but actually you've got two completely separate needs that are constantly evolving, mm. and especially for the, the woman in the relationship yeah. during, after pregnancy, after childbirth, the needs are different. Yeah. The needs change. Yeah. And I think it comes down to two two different things. So the first thing is understanding my needs and honoring yeah. what they actually are, mm -hmm. but also communicating them to the to your partner, right? So for example, we'll use this example that you brought up yeah. about childbirth and being completely shattered, exhausted, yeah. unable to even think about sex, leave alone yeah. wanting to have sex seven times a week or whatever it yeah. is. Um but actually you know, a lot of women might feel guilty. They might feel yeah. ashamed. They might feel, um, they might start, you know, having quite negative thoughts around, yeah. I don't feel attractive, I'm not attractive, he doesn't want me, I don't, I don't want to have sex, you know, yeah. what's gonna happen? And so I think it's really easy for us to get caught up in this overthinking, this overanalyzing, yeah. in which sense we're just digging ourselves a hole. Mm -hmm. But really I think having the support around these times of change, around these times of massive change in life is so mm -hmm. important. Because if, as a woman, we can understand, hey, my needs have changed. I need more emotional support right now. Yeah. You know, I don't really need sexual support right now. That's not what I'm. Yeah. That's not what I'm looking for. My desire, you know, that that desire for so much sex isn't there right now. It's kind of on the yeah. back burner. But it's about communicating with, being able to communicate with your partner. I have these other needs that are not being met. Yeah. Right? If I can get these basic needs of mine met, which is I need to feel safe. I need to feel nurtured. Yeah. I still need to feel loved and wanted and desired by you. Supported. Supported, totally, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the foundation, yeah. isn't it? And I think a lot of relationships break down because one person is, is growing and developing and understanding themselves better and this other person isn't able to empathize. Yeah. Right? They're like, I don't understand why you feel this way. I don't yeah. understand why you want X, Y, and Z when two yeah. years ago you wanted something different or two months mm. ago the, the woman I met and married was different to who you are today. Of course we're different to who you yeah. know, to who we were two years ago or even even two months yeah. ago. So I think it comes it comes down to understanding my own needs, honoring my needs. Yeah. And in doing that, you can then effectively communicate to your partner. Yeah. And then their empathy is, is what's required, right? And not getting into a rut as well of definitely you're yeah. not meeting my needs. Yeah. So you know, and I think there's so much blaming the other person that goes on in a relationship yeah, yeah. and actually you know like you said it's honoring each other yeah and, and each other's actually needs. you know i'm going to take a step towards you yeah. and i realize that i'm not meeting your needs but come on come to me yeah you have to meet me part way as well yeah, and it really yeah. is it does take two people but i think that would be my last kind of question mm -hmm. um on this topic, on saving the relationship mm -hmm. that's not in a great place. 
how do you cope when that person is not um, em- empathetic? I don't know yeah. how to say this in a nice <laughs> way without saying not emotionally intelligent or empathetic, yeah. sympathetic, supportive. You know, there yeah. are so many labels out there, and I know so many people. You know. Yeah, they come up with like sociopath yeah, or, yeah. Googling narcissist, sociopath, yeah. psychopath, he's a psychopath. Yeah. You know, but it's, yeah, it's really, really difficult. What do you do when you are trying to communicate with somebody who just isn't getting it? Isn't getting yeah. it on yeah. that emotional level? Yeah. I think a lot, a lot of the stuff that I help support my clients with really is um, once they are able to understand where they are in their mm-hmm. life, what's going on for them kind of emotionally, mentally, like you said, emotional intelligence, that's exactly the word that I use yeah. because that's what I, you know, cause we, we've never got this education, you know, yeah. we're taught like maths and chemistry and physics in high school. Yeah. No one teaches us about emotions, about anxiety, mm. depression, anger, you know, what, why, why do I feel this way? Why do yeah. I feel so overwhelmed? Why do I have panic attacks? No one ever teaches us this stuff. We leave that till later in life yeah. and we've fallen apart. <laughs> yes. And we spend a fortune yeah. trying to pick trying up to pieces. Trying to figure it all out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's so needed in, in schools, you know, just from primary yeah. level, it's so, so needed. But that's my, my rant. But yeah. um, <laughs> like I can spend like an hour talking about just that. But I think, what yeah, that's what I help my clients realize and understand and, yeah. and really um, understand themselves. So... Mm-hmm. In dealing with, you know, clients who come to me who are like, my partner doesn't understand why I feel this way. Yeah. You know, he doesn't think I should be depressed or anxious or when he yeah. speaks to me in a certain way and I get really upset or I feel really abandoned or rejected. Yeah. I don't understand why I feel abandoned and rejected yeah. because of something he's done or said and he doesn't understand it either and then yeah. we get into a fight about mm-hmm. it. But actually, it goes back to all the experiences that you've had in life and in a nutshell, it's, you know, if you're angry about some, the way he's chewing or the way mm. he's scraping the dinner plate, the dinner off his plate, yeah. you know, um, if you're getting angry about these small things, what I touched on earlier was actually, it's not these small things that you're getting angry yeah. about. It's all the other times in your life mm-hmm. that you have been made to feel angry or upset or rejected or abandoned that haven't been processed that are coming back up. So it's almost like, you know, that inner child, some people call it, you know, if it's something from your childhood, that inner child, for example, you know, you were rejected or abandoned by an ex or or something happened in high school or a parent or you were, you know, experiencing some kind of abuse. Um, All those kind of patterns and experiences are buried deep into our, in our subconsciousness. And that is brought back up. That's triggered when we've got our partner in front of us Mm. doing something that's small. Yeah but it triggers that kind of reaction in us. So I don't feel angry and I don't, you know, burst or I don't feel rejected or abandoned just from what he's doing. Actually, it's all the other stuff that I haven't processed yet. And it's about communicating this to your partner after you get to understand it a bit better and process that with me. And that's the psychotherapy aspect of my work. So again, really working on yourself totally is the essence of kind of all of your answers come back to you working on yourself and maybe, you know, not just looking for answers with the two of you. And if you do have a partner who isn't willing to go for counselling with you, isn't ready to take that step and even admit that there are problems within the relationship, then really, Michelle, you're kind of saying, take the step yourself and go and investigate yourself yourself (laughs) empower yourself that you know that is the biggest message here like yeah invest your time your energy and your money Mm. into yourself because it's so so worth it yeah it'll it'll change your life and it'll change your relationship it'll change your marriage but it'll it'll also change the way that you Mm. show up as a person it'll change the way you show up in your work in your marriage with your children yeah you know understanding yourself is yeah it just it transforms your life yeah to everything so i found this really really interesting and um, and super helpful so if you still feel like you're in trouble your relationship's in trouble then do carry on and watch part two of this chat um because we will be talking about how to get through separation and divorce in the next part of this chat um but please do get in touch right in the comments below um and Michelle and I will both be keeping our eye out in the comments. Definitely, yeah. Um, or get in touch with either of us via social media on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And 
we'll both try and be there to support you through whatever you need some help with but you know look into counsellors and yeah. professionals who are near you and I do I really believe that not everybody suits every type of counsellor yeah. or therapist yeah because there's so many different kinds of professionals yeah. out there and it's about you know it might be trying a few different professionals before you so. find one that really fits with you yeah I it's really really, really important I we're yeah. both very much agreed on that so please do as ever i feel like i say this at the end of all of my chat videos <laughs> you know do go out there and get some help yeah. because you know if you leave these things and you don't do something about them they really only stand to get worse they're not Definitely. they so rarely get better on their yeah. own and that is just you know, I think that's the same with any mental, emotional, physical, physical needs, yeah, all of it, yeah. you know, if you don't do something yeah. about it, you don't act, you don't ask for help, it's not going to fix itself. Um, It'll get it, worse, yeah. definitely. So please yeah. do, please do. Yeah. Do it for yeah. yourself, do it for yourself, do it for your marriage, your relationship and, and for your kids if you've got any. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thank you so Thank much, you. Michelle. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> and join us for the next chat here on Hey Mummy. Thank you.